Okay. All right. Let's talk, first of all, the first half of my talk, I'm going to be talking about why is good stockmanship important. And people are really learning this. This is the bright spot in the industry. Uh, one of the first projects I ever did, and it was a long time ago, is I found that cattle that got all excited in the squeeze shoot had lower weight gain. 20 years ago, that was a radical concept. Now, it's absolutely accepted. Now, there's different ways you can measure temperament in cattle. You can measure how much they shake up the squeeze chute, how fast they come out. Both methods work. Now, if you work with animals, then you're going to get a lower temperament score. Now, where you tend to see the genetic temperament is when you suddenly start on an animal. That's when it will show you that it's what it really is like genetically. Okay, this is the good news. This is research that my student, uh, Ruth Woolley did. She went to 28 large feed yards in the major feeding areas of the US, and she scored animal handling. And the average electric pride use was 3.7%. That's fabulous. Now, if you don't have to write this all down. These are on web. Go to Google Scholar. If you can spell Woolley Woody, and then my name, you'll be able to find this. Vocalization, that's vocalization before you do a procedure, mooing. You should be able to catch them in the squeeze chute without making a moo or having to use an electric prod on them, make a moo, 1.3%. And the feed yard with the highest score was 6%. This is really good. Falling down, coming out of the squeeze chute was under 1%. These are really good scores. Stumbling, going down on the knees at about um, 7%. Miscaught, that's where you catch them around the head, you know, like nutcracker their head, really bad thing to do. Another study that Ruth did, she found that cattle that got nutcracker on the head had lower weight gains, or they get caught around the middle. Miscaught's about 4%, and then of course a lot of cattle still run out of the squeeze chute. Now the importance of measuring animal handling is then you can tell, am I getting better, am I getting worse? It prevents the problem of bad becoming normal. The other thing that measuring does is it prevents really bad stuff from going on. Now, you really work hard on your stockmanship. You can do things that get you know, beyond this. But I'm a big believer in managing the things that you measure. Now, there's been a lot of research that shows that when you acclimate animals to handling, they get easier to handle. You know, you know pigs that have been walked in the aisles, easier to handle. Cattle where you've walked through them, got them used to people going through them they're going to be easier to handle. And cattle that had to be handled every day for an experiment, when things were done quietly and gently, the temperament score actually went down because they, they learned that they weren't going to be hurt in the chute. They got easier to handle. Now, if you rough cattle up, they're going to get harder to handle. I have seen cattle where they've been nutcrackered across the head like this, and then the next time around, they absolutely won't go in the squeeze chute. OK, so how do I feel about using electric prodders? I don't recommend banning them, but you need to get it out of your hand. It's never the primary driving tool. You only pick it up if it won't go in the squeeze chute. I just got back from a trip to Europe, and uh, they go, oh, we don't use any electric prods in our plant. And then this one guy thought it was perfectly OK to shove the water hose down the cattle's ear to make it get up. I'm going, no way. This is the reason why I don't um, recommend uh, banning electric prods, but it needs to be something you go and get it. It's not there in your hand. This is some uh, research done by uh, Cook, relatively recent research, where beef heifers were taken and walked through the chutes, acclimate them, and they had better conception rate. This uh, Fordyce research is really old on training Brahmin heifers. Now, the thing is, good stockmanship is going to take some time, but it's worth it. It's definitely worth it. OK, this is some other research. First trip on the truck is a whole lot more stressful than the seventh or eighth trip because the animal is getting acclimated to it, getting used to it. Now, the thing is, oh, I'm going to have the same problem Karen had. Animal memories are very specific because an animal is a visual thinker. Animals are sensory-based thinkers, not word-based thinkers. They remember pictures. So OK. A guy comes out and he feeds me feed in the truck. OK, I learned that's safe. Then the first time I go in the crowds, I'm upset. But the crowds are a different picture than the truck. If you train a horse to tolerate a blue and white umbrella opening, that doesn't train the horse to a tarp flapping around. 
Think about it. Tarps and umbrellas look totally different. In fact, I was just talking to somebody just today about hot air balloons flying over the cattle. It was fine until the one day the hot air balloon landed in the pasture and now this big billowing thing that was scary. How about drones? Yeah, don't do it in the enclosed horse arena. Not a good idea. But if you fly it up really high, keep it up high, and then gradually lower, cattle look up at it. Don't chase them with it. Now, once they've learned that you chase them with drones, then they're going to view them differently. A man on a horse and a man on the ground, that is viewed by the cattle as two totally different things. And you want something dangerous at a meatpacking plant. It's cattle that see their first person on foot at a meatpacking plant. And the flight zone's gone from this big from here to the wall. Because a man on the horse is a different picture than the man on the ground. So it's really important for cattle to learn how to go in and out of pens with a person on foot before they leave a feed yard or a ranch. Get animals used to different things. Obviously, we've got to feed them at the same time. But used to different people, used to different vehicles. You can go into one dairy. Oh, the cows are fine with little kids in the parlor. You put little kids in the parlor somewhere else, the cows are going crazy. See, what you've got to realize is previous experiences have a big effect. In fact, I have an article that's a free download online. It's called, How Do Animals React and Perceive Stressful Situations Such as Handling, Restraint, and Transport? First experiences with something new, like a new vehicle, say maybe the new four-wheeler or the new corral, needs to be a good first experience. The first experience with something new is a terrible first experience. It can be difficult to get them over the fear memory. Now the thing about stuff that's new, new things are attractive if the animal is allowed to voluntarily approach. They're scary if you shove it in their face. I call that the paradox of novelty. Put some expensive camera equipment out on the pasture, they're all going to come up to it. <laughs> yeah, a tra approach novelty. Now the main thing I want to get across with this chart is, is when you force animals to do stuff, you get a lot more fear stress than when they voluntarily walk through the corrals, when they just move easily for you. And what, what is this stress? What is handling stress? It's fear. And some people might say to me, well, fear is not a scientific word. Yes, it is a scientific word. This is where science gets in silos. You go over the neuroscience literature, there's lots of information about fear. Lots and lots of information, and that's the word they use. OK, a proper scientific word. Sows that back away from people have 6% less piglets. Look at how old that study is. And now, just recently, people are really getting much more interested in stockmanship. Um, this is a study my student did. Dairy cattle that approach people had a lower somatic cell count. That is definitely a good thing. OK, and there are some nice low flight zone dairy cows right there. OK. Um, Beef steers that were forced to run. This is another thing that my student worked on. We looked at uh, really quiet handling at a big feed yard and forcing cattle to run. Uh, you've got, um, no, that was, that was a Kansas State study, getting them mixed up here. They, um, you have forced cattle to run, you're going to raise stress hormones. But cattle that tend to exit faster, um, not a good thing. Rough handling of feedlot cattle, one of the things I found years ago is cattle handled roughly had more bruises. I also looked at how cattle were sold. This was back in the days when there was a lot of live weight selling. When there was sold live weight and the slaughter plant had to pay for it, you had twice as many bruises. And high use of electric prods in pigs, really bad. Don't be doing this sort of stuff. Running cattle, screaming, whistling and yelling, miscatching them you are going to lower your weight gain. This is my student study. Again, if you can go on Google Spaller, spell woolly woolly right, you'll be able to find it. OK, this is research that was done in the last five minutes prior to slaughter. This is where you can really wreck meat. Cattle zapped electric prods in the last five minutes have tougher meat. Pigs have more, male, uh, more pale, soft, watery meat. Dark cutting, that's more of a long-term stress where the glycogen and the muscle gets used up. Okay, attitude of a stock person. It matters. 
People that like animals have more productive animals. It's that simple. Now, I was just over at the Autism Center, and we're wondering where we're we going to get people that be good pen writers. There's a lot of people that are kind of shy, really shy, don't like to talk, and they've been labeled autism. They'd make a great pen writer. Yes, and they'd probably go back to their apartment at night and play video games, but during the day, they'd make a great pen writer. But they're not going to do it if they don't know about it. People ask me all the time how I got interested in cattle. I was exposed to cattle when I was 15. I had nothing to do with cattle prior to that. It gets back to getting exposed. OK, you manage the things that you measure. I'm going to just show you a little bit of meatpacking plant data. And when you measure stuff, it prevents bad from becoming normal. Let's look at lameness in dairy cattle. It's really bad. Now, the state of Wisconsin has been doing a really good job of lowering it and improving lameness. One of the things is they've been measuring it. All right, we're going to score animal handling at a feed yard or on a ranch. How many animals run out of the squeeze chute? So you can just score them, speeders or non-speeders. How many animals fall, especially coming out of the squeeze chute? That needs to be really low, like 1%. How many stumble, go down on their knees? How many animals vocalize when you catch them? Because you nutcrackered their head or you prodded them too hard? Obviously, if you brand them, they're going to vocalize. So you score this before you do a procedure. And you just score them, did he move, yes or no? And how many did you use electric prod on? I hope practically none of them. Now, there are some differences in uh, some animals are easier to handle than others. When I go to meat plants now, and I see a welfare problem, it's something I got to fix out at the feed yard or at the farm. You know, like maybe breeding stock brought in in really bad condition, lame animals, heat stressed animals, or super wild animals that are meeting that first person on foot. In 1996, only 30% of the beef plants could stun 90% of the cattle, 95% of the cattle with a single shot. I just got 2015 data. It's fabulous. The three plants in Canada are in the data set. The average stunning score, first shot stunning score, was 99.7. That is super phenomenal. I never thought they could get that good. And then the few that were missed, they were immediately given a second shot, 100% dead when they put them up on the rail. Super, super good, about a 2% vocalization score. Electric prod score was under 15%. Really, really good. And the thing that frustrates me, people don't know about it. Now, you're using the same principle in these measurement systems that you use in HACCP. What are the really important things to measure? There's a tendency on welfare guidelines to turn all the gigantic paperwork on it. Well, it worked 20 years of construction. Down there at Brooks on Lakeside, I was living up there for a while. We were putting in the center track restrainer system. And you want to see how that works, you can look it up on Beef Plant Video Tour with Temple Grandin. But I want to look at things I can directly observe because people fake records. It needs to be like traffic rules. You've got to figure out what is the important things to measure. Now, I was talking with Karen this morning during her talk. I think we also need to list some bad stuff we don't do. And there's the um, NAMI, uses that Alanco Body Score 1 Dairy Cow drawing as an example of something that should not be put on a truck. Everybody's seen that drawing, Alanco Holstein Body Score 1. That needs to get put down at home. Let's just come out and say, there's some bad things like that we shouldn't be doing. And that's a cow that's not going to make we're going to win any points with consumers, that's for sure. OK, there's different kinds of variables. These measurements I've been talking about, it's an animal-based variable. It's an outcome variable. I don't tell you what kind of handling facility you have to have. I'm telling you what outcomes you've got to do. That's, and uh, then you have some practices we're going to just ban. Like you don't poke uh, sticks up uh, you know, in the rear and the eye and places sensitive areas. Uh, you don't drag uh, animals around the feed yard. Uh, and, and getting away from telling you exactly how to build something. We've got to do something that achieves a certain end. And then there's a few bad practices. We can all agree that we're just not going to do. Oh, boy, oh, yeah. same problem Karen had. Now, you take lameness in, uh, in, in cattle. There's a lot of different things that can make cattle lame. The bottom line is, as they walk off the truck at the packing plant, if I got lame cattle, 
It's up to the veterinarians and the managers to figure out why. But if I don't measure things like lameness, it can creep up on you. Ten years ago, if someone said to me, we'd have lameness problems in beef cattle, I would have thought it was crazy. You know, we've got some lameness problems in beef cattle right now. Now, is this thing going to work? Okay, this is something we did a little survey on. I'm getting really worried that some cattle might be walking down a very bad road that pigs went down in the late 80s. In the late 80s, pigs were bred for giant loins, rapid growth, and thin back fat. And they ended up with horrendous leg problems, like this middle one here, the collapsed ankle. Some of the bulls today are way too post-legged. And I'm afraid there's certain lines of cattle where they're just indiscriminately selecting for carcass traits, and we're starting to see these same leg problems. So my student went out to a bunch of feed yards in Colorado, Kansas, Texas, and what she found was cattle coming in from the north more likely to have, starting to see some leg conformation issues, more highly bred than the cattle from Texas. There's a collapsed ankle in the pig. My student found one of these a month ago at one of the large plants in Colorado. This is a genetic defect. And the thing is, we're just starting to get hints of this kind of trouble. Let's prevent it from happening. There are some breeders that don't think you have to do visual appraisal of cattle. I'm going, yes, you do. You need it to stay out of trouble. It's just that simple. There's corkscrew foot. It is a defect. Recently, I was out at a large feed yard down in the States talking to the manager about this. He didn't know what it was. Let's not let this become a problem. And when my student went out to the feed yards, she looked at receiving cattle coming in. They hadn't been fed anything. We wanted to make sure that things that were fed in the feed yard had nothing to do with this. Okay, now here's some stuff you just don't do. Now, when does tapping an animal become beating? We got in some big arguments in the meat industry where some packing plants got shut down for violations of the Humane Slaughter Act for beating up animals. And so they're tapping it with a paddle. When does it become beating from a regulatory standpoint? Well, we got this nice little video we made called Proper Use of Livestock Driving Tools. You do have to use that exact title to find it. Proper Use of Livestock Driving Tools. And um, you've got a very, very fake plastic pig. I mean, totally fake life-sized plastic pig. And I beat a box with a paddle, an empty box with a paddle. And when that box starts to bend in, that's beating. And then there's some things you may have to have some input measures, you know, like um, some space requirements, some stuff like this. All right, here's some calm, no stress handling. Absolutely no fear stress right here. You're just going to lead it around with a feed bucket. And uh, get the same problem that Karen has. Okay, we got a little bit of stress right here. I think the cowboy's got a little stress to his pride, and the horse has got a big pile of fear stress. Because the saddle coming off like that, that's sudden novelty. And sudden novelty can be scary. Okay, what are some signs that cattle are starting to get upset? You're working some cattle. Okay, ears up, heads up. First thing, heads up, ears pinned back. They start pooping. When cattle start dribbling poo down their backside, it's because you scared the poo out of them. <laughs> We're proper polite people here. We're not going to say the other word. Another thing they'll do, horses and cattle will both do it, is they'll start to switch their tails. And it will go faster and faster and faster and faster, and then kaboom, they kick. And eye white is showing. That's another scientifically validated measure that animals are starting to get upset. Okay, let's look at some simple things in cattle handling. Orientation to the sun can affect how well a facility will work. Here you're headed straight directly into a morning sun. Animals tend to move towards the light, but they're not going to go into blinding light like this. That's not a good deal. Okay, distractions. This is some of the first work I ever did. Vehicles parked along the facilities. Now, the place where we really need to have solid sides is outer perimeters. Just heard a really nice talk that Ron Gill gave, and he says, yes, and if you make that solid side on the outer perimeter, make it high enough so they're not trying to look over the top. He made a really good point. If they look down, they stop, and if they're going around like this, they don't go either. So get rid of the vehicles, ho hoses on the ground, the coats on fences, 
people standing in the wrong places. These are all things that can make animals balk. And they got to stop and look at it. You get a distraction, like a pickup parked alongside the facility, and they stop. You got two choices, move the pickup, or you're going to have to wait, let them look at it, because if you just push them up there, they're going to turn back on you. But get down in the chutes and see what they're seeing. You can see a car through the fence. You can see a little white bottle there. Get rid of the chains hanging down in there. Why, after all these years, I have to keep talking about chains hanging down in chutes? Because people don't take them out. Get rid of the chains. I'm also really getting to dislike backstop gates because people have too many of them. And if you have a backstop gate right where your single file starts, don't make them clump through it. Tie it open. Put a remote control rope on it so that the cattle don't have to clump through that backstop. This is what I call the dark movie theater effect. We got a really, really sunny day outside and a black hole in there for the handling facility. And they're not going to want to go in there. So what are some things I can do? Well, one thing I could do is take some of the tin off, put in some white translucent panels. I got to get daylight coming through that. There's no way I can light it up with electric light bulbs. I can't use enough light bulbs to compete with the sun. But if they can see daylight through the building, it'll work better. Wait a minute, I thought I had another. Oh. Okay, another thing you can do with this dark movie theater is, um, is put a shade over the entrance. Just no sides on it to reduce the contrast. Now at night, they're going to go in there great with electric light. Okay, they stopped at a puddle. Then you got to give the leader a chance to stop, look, put the head down, go slashing across it. Then the other cattle are going to follow. Okay, there's a backstop hanging down right there at the entrance to the chute. If you put a remote control rope on that so I can hold it open for the cattle, they'll go in there a whole lot easier. Another little tip is use following behavior. You need to have a lead up chute that's long enough so I can put at least four or five cows in there. Nothing's worse than a lead up that's only like two cattle long. You want to wait until the lead up's got space in it. Then you bring them up and they go in. Now you look at the ears on those cattle. What do you think those ears are looking at? I was back to taking a picture. Those ears were looking at me. Look at what the ears are watching. They'll watch stuff with their ears. You just watch. Small groups. Good handling is going to require more walking to bring up small groups of animals into your crowd pen. If your crowd pen holds 10 cattle stuffed, put five in it. Good handling is going to require more walking to go back and bring up those small groups. Yep, going to have to do a bit more walking. Fill the crowd pen about half full. One gate that definitely needs to be solid is the back crowd gate. That needs to be solid. People need to understand the animal's flight zone. Now that tame animal that we showed there in the beginning, it's got no flight zone at all. These sheep have definitely got some flight zone. And that's the distance where when you enter it, the animals move away. But then there's a zone of, of awareness or zone of pressure zone where the animals know you're there. They turn around and they look at you. They know you're there. And then there's a third zone where you're so far away they don't even notice you. So right here, the black animals there, I've entered the flight zone. And look at the Charlet. The Charlet's got his head up looking. He knows I'm there, but he doesn't feel he's got to get up yet. And then I got two other animals over there stuffing their faces. They don't even realize I'm there. So you have the flight zone, then you have the pressure zone. Some people call it the zone of influence or zone of awareness, where they know you're there. They'll turn around and look at you, but they don't move away, and then you've got, you're far enough away where you don't have any influence on them. Now this is the handy dandy little way to get animals into the squeeze chute without using electric prod. So we're going to pretend that's a squeeze chute. And the cattle are lined up here. And I just walk forward and quickly walk back by them. You've got to do kind of a quick motion. Walk forward, quickly back, walk back by them. And when you go past their shoulder, they're going to go forward. Just try it. It's a handy dandy little thing and it's really kind of counterintuitive. Now all of these diagrams are on my website, grandon.com. 
They're also in my Humane Livestock Handling book, which unfortunately didn't get here, but I brought one copy we're going to raffle off tonight at the live auction that you can look at. So, uh, and it is available, of course, on the book websites. Okay, should we have solid fences? Some people in low stress handling say no solid fences. The thing I'm seeing is what works really well is you can make a solid outer fence. And you can see this is high enough so nobody's not trying to look out the top. High solid fence, but the inner fence is open. Now, I would prefer to have it solid up to here to keep their feet in there. Then you're working on the ground, no catwalks. I can tell you right now, I'm getting too old to jump up and down on catwalks. So I'm really getting to like the ones without the catwalks. I'm gonna show you some drawings with no catwalks. Now you're working the flight zone there. Now the thing is, you've got to stay out of the flight zone. Sort of imagine the flight zone sort of comes out of the facility like a force field and you have an open side. So you've got a whole area there where you've got to stay away from it, except when you enter the area to move your animals. And if it's a curve shoot system like this, it's a half circle area. You have to stay out of. And if you get into that area and you stand there, and then the cattle start to do what? And then they start to go do this. And then you back up and you get out of there. And then they'll stand quietly. Here's a guy too close to an animal deep in the flight zone. What he needs to do is back off. He's also got a hot shot in his hand he shouldn't have. Now one thing I really like in this facility is it's got the solid outer wall and it's got the see-through inner wall that's solid on the bottom. But you have to stay away from that except when it's time to move them. And again, look at those ears. Those ears are right on the person. Lead up shoot length. You probably need 40, 50 feet. You've got to have enough lead up shoot for following behavior. Now you don't want to get them too long. But it's really horrible to have something that only holds two animals because there's no way to get any flow. Because what you want to do in your crowd pen is bring them into the crowd pen and have them pass through. Don't hold them in the crowd pen. Here's a little trick you can try. If they don't want to come in the squeeze chute, try putting a piece of cardboard on the back half of the squeeze chute. Just try it. And it's got to be something stiff like a piece of cardboard. You know, if it's something flappy, flappy, that's going to scare them. So they don't see you standing there. Now, some of the new hydraulic chutes have controls on a console where you're not right on top of the cap. But on a manual chute, you're going to have to be standing there. Okay, open sides versus solid sides. If it's open, you've got to have a people-free zone. It requires more skill. Uh, solid, I do, one thing I'm really getting to like is the solid outer perimeter. Unless you're out in a remote pasture, you've just got to get all the pickups that are parked around the blocks. Uh, Cattle that are really wild, and also if you got less skilled people, open sides don't work very well. This just shows some completely solid sides. Now, a, when a crowd pen comes, when the chute comes around a complete half circle, one of the reasons that works is you're taking advantage of the tendency to go back to where they come from. Cattle want to go back to where they come from. That's something they want to do. Ugh got the same problem that Karen's got with it. Now, you can see this uh, tub system here, and it shows the right and wrong layout. There are a lot of tub systems laid out wrong. Boy, that would give tubs a bad name. And where the dotted line is, that's wrong, because they can't see a place to go. You lay out a tub system, you want to lay it out so they go around and go back to where they come from. Lay it out in a full half circle. You want to take advantage of that natural behavior to go back to where you come from. Also, you'll notice on this that the, um, well, the outer radius, they go straight in. You've got to lay them out right. These are on my website. They're also in Humane Livestock Handling, which is available online. And the association here, hopefully, will be getting the books. Maybe they'll order them from them. I'll be happy to sign some cards. OK. now. You know, as I'm getting older, I don't like to go on catwalks. Also, we need to get some things we can make out of pre-manufactured components. And this is a real simple little system where the outer fence is all solid. But instead of working a catwalk around the outer edge of the crowd pen, you work the pivot. Now, I've got some copies of that. Since we didn't get the books, I copied some of these two little layouts. And I've got copies here that I can give out to people afterwards. 
I call this working the pivot. So you, you put the crowd gate on the first notch, stand where that little grating is, the one little baby piece of catwalk there. Stand there, and they'll come right on around you and go in. It works great. There's been a bunch of these built. They work really, really well. This system is the same idea, always taking advantage of the cattle's tendency to go around you. And, and uh, you're working in here, but you're going to have to maintain a big people-free zone here that you only enter when it's time to move the cattle. Now, of course, that's the bud box system. And those two drawings I just showed you, these were sort of, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make something I think is better than the bud box. Mm -hmm. But this, see, both of these systems use the same principle, going back to where you come from. And all of these systems have to be laid out correctly. There's so much stuff that's laid out wrong. And either type of systems must be laid out right. I can't believe some of the stuff that, that uh, some of the layout mistakes I've seen on the internet. Okay, driving aids. Some people prefer not to have any driving aid at all. You know, if you are going to have one, I like the little flags because you can kind of reach out there it's very quietly. People get way too aggressive with driving aids. Also, people get to yelling and screaming at cattle. Now, I saw something the other day. It kind of really showed sort of the art of stockmanship. I went out to a big feed yard, and there was no yelling, no prods. Uh, they were passing the audit just fine. But I kind of heard too much rattling and clanking around some of the equipment. And there was one guy standing up on the lead-up chute, and he had this flag, and he just kept, he wasn't doing anything bad, but he just had this flag doing this. And I just moved him over to another location, and everything quieted down. Sometimes amazing how fixing a whole lot of little things adds up to a big thing. And another thing you've got to have is non-slip flooring. That is just essential. OK, I'll just sorry, show those pictures. There's kind of two different ways to look at designing things. You can make things that are very simple, but they're going to require more skill. Or I can make things that are more elaborate, but they require less skill. And, and uh, uh, one of the things I would not recommend the bud box for is if you have unskilled labor. It does require more skill. It's going to require more skill to Something like this is going to use a lot less skill. This thing is really frustrating, but since you're in the bud box, that's going to require more skill. So you either have something that's simple to build and cheap, but it's more skill dependent, or something a little more expensive, but unskilled people can be trained to use it easier. You know, there's always trade-offs on a lot of things in design. You know, there's differences of opinion as to which design to use. But the thing I want to avoid, whichever design you use, please don't lay them out wrong. I will help you lay out any of these things, lay them out correctly. OK, non-slip flooring. In holding animals in the squeeze chute, there's an optimal pressure. People have a tendency when they struggle, let's just squish them tighter. You've got to make sure you get a squeeze chute that doesn't throw the cow off balance. Some of the less expensive squeeze chutes just work on one, with one squeeze side and throw the animal off balance unless you adjust them really carefully. You throw them off balance, trigger the fear of falling, that makes your animal uh, get excited. And they've got to have a non-slip floor to stand on in that squeeze chute, because that's going to make them get the fear of falling. Get rid of dogs around the facility. I hate dogs in the corrals. One of the reasons I hate them is because if they bite cattle while they're standing in line in single file, they train cattle to kick. And then I work at the packing plant, and I've nearly had my head taken off at the packing plant. Now, there are a few dogs around that do a really good job. But for every dog that's good, it's like 10 others are totally horrible. <laughs> OK, non-slip flooring. All right, let's see how good you are at observation. How many people in here, raise your hand, saw that that animal was looking at that sunbeam? Oh, no, you're not doing too good. Uh, well, I can tell you that 4-H kids did a lot better. You know, who did, you know who does the best at seeing this? I showed this to a bunch of first through sixth graders, this same slide. And over half the hands came up. Little kids saw this. Yeah, we're getting too much into language. I want you to start thinking about what a cattle's seeing. What are they hearing? 
Okay, and that's just my website. We've got lots of free stuff on that. And uh, now it's time for questions. I know I'm in between you and the cocktail hour. And I do have the, some questions.